What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the Thomas Gallery. And today, I want to tell you a nice little good story and uh, I'll kind of a background myself. Now, many of you have seen and some of you have asked in my videos a particular item that I wear. Okay? I have it on all my videos. It's no secret. This. This one right here. It's not so much the ring itself. It's the item, the symbol that's on the ring. See the symbol right here? Right in the middle. Not Nothing to hide. And I've gotten a few comments. <clears throat> some were negative based off of ignorance. That's okay. And some were just inquisitive. And... The people who know me know this, but a lot of other people don't. So, figure why not, you know? Ain't nothing to hide, ain't, no, ain't nothing, nothing diabolical, so let's go. I want to tell a story about why I became a Freemason. Now, for those who don't know, for those who are speculating, this is just one of, this is one of the symbols of Freemasonry, okay? The compass in the square and the, the letter G is optional, depending on, you know, the item. It could be have the letter G inside the middle or it could not. OK. Now. I'm not going to talk about what these symbols mean. Or anything like that. I'm simply going to talk about why I joined Freemasonry in the first place. So. It started. It started for a while ago, thinking about it. And I've always seen this symbol all over, everywhere I went, all over the place. But growing up, I never, never knew what it meant. I never paid it any mind, okay? Since I actually had no reference for it before, I, I never knew anyone in my family who were Freemasons, Freemasons. As far as I know, as far as I know, I am the first Freemason in my family. Not, well, not necessarily true. That's not necessarily true. I have a cousin who is a Freemason. So let me, let me correct myself. I have a cousin who is a Freemason. But other than that, I don't know of anyone. And, you know, as I got older, well, as time went on, I didn't really give it much thought. But as I got older, like in my maybe like kind of like early to mid, early to mid 20s. I started seeing it more often and I started to become more curious about it. Now, of course, I'll be, I'll be lying to you if I say I didn't see a lot of information about this. When you look on TV, the History Channel, and all that stuff, you know, uh, Freemasonries and the mysteries and all that, that stuff like that. And I'd be lying if I said I wasn't influenced by those quote-unquote documentaries and videos and things of that nature in the movies like um the dan browns uh with the movie movies and stuff with tom hanks playing in the movies like what's the um angels and demons and da vinci code and all that stuff i'll be lying to you if i didn't say that those things did not pop in my mind when i thought about freemasonry i would be lying to you if i said it didn't but i joined mainly well, at first, I, I first got really curious about it, mainly because when I was in college, my mentor, who was not a Freemason, who was, sorry, who was not a Freemason, but understood a lot of the symbolism and a lot of the lessons that were taught. And one day, um, after class, after uh, one of my college classes, I went to his office like always, because every day, Every day I was, in, every day I was um, in college, you know, I went to him, you know, just to just to learn from him and be around him. And like I said, he was a great influence in my life. Great, well, he is a great influence in my life. A great mentor of mine, Mr. Pinkney. Shout out to you, man. Thank you. And we would always just sit and just talk about current events and history and economics and just man stuff like th things that you know men, that men talk about you know manhood and things of that nature and growing up and what it was like growing up because he's from dc also 
what was like growing up in DC in his era and my era, you know, just just talking like just a real a real good kind of like a father son relationship, right? And one day I was sitting in his office, right? And we were just talking, we were just talking, we were just talking. And I asked him one day, and I was actually I was actually nervous to ask him because I didn't know really how to approach it. But I asked him one day. I said, I said, I said uh, Mr. Painting. I mean, I, I, I said, I don't want to be rude or anything, but um, are you a Freemason? And he stopped. When I asked the question, he was he was he was digging in his he was digging in his like, in his files and stuff in his in his cabinets and all that stuff, and he stopped. And he turned around. Right? He turned around and he looked at me. And when he looked at me, he kinda like smirked. Right? And he said, No, I'm not a Freemason, but I'm a student. And then that was it. Now, when he said that, I didn't understand what he meant. Like when he said it, it, it caught me off guard. Like I said, okay. He, he gave me an answer. I didn't press it. You know, I, I ain't pressed the issue because I was too nervous to ask in the first place. So when he gave me an answer, I wasn't gonna press the issue. I just took it and I just, I just you know, went on with it. But the thought kept, the thought kept popping in my head. You know, I'm not, I'm not a Freemason, but I'm a student. I never knew what he meant. I know what he means now, but back then I didn't know what he meant. You know, now it's like some some months have passed, and one day I was in his office again, and we were just talking. We were just talking. We was in, it was just he and I in the office. The door, the door was closed in his office. It was just he and I, just talking, rapping, you know, just regular talking. And he said to me, he said, Chris, he said, I love you like a son. Let me ask you a question. I said, okay. I was nervous. I didn't know what he was going to ask me. I was nervous. He said, let me, let me ask you a question. I said, okay. He said, have you ever thought about Freemasonry? And I paused. Because I really didn't know what to say. I was like, I have, but I don't know if I said yes. Well, what happened? Like, say, I, to me, I have the ideas of the very secretive, the mysterious, the really uptight nose in the air type images of when I think about Freemasonry, when I thought about Freemasonry, that's what I thought about. I thought about, you know, the, the very secretive, mysterious, scary versions that I saw on the documentaries. So I said, um, did I just say yes? I said, yes, I have. He said, okay. He said, okay. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you this number. I'm going to give you this number, right? And in a week, call this guy. You know, he, he's, a, he's, he's a, another professor, another colleague of mine. And I'll let him know that I'm expecting you. I mean, that, I'm let, I'll let him know that, 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 that to expect your call. I said, okay. So a week goes by and I call him. Right? And I called a guy and I didn't get an answer. I called again and I didn't get no answer. So I said, okay, fine. I ain't get no answer. All right, whatever. Then he gave me an application. Then the next day when I saw him, what was that, the, um, the week after that, I saw my mentor. And I said, I called him, like your ex, and I didn't get no answer. He said, okay. So he gave me an application. Right, because when you when you when you sign when you when you want to join, there's an application, very simple application. Any, any, anybody could look it up. Okay, it ain't no mystery. Anybody could look it up, and it gives you all the criteria that you need for the application to join. Anybody can join. I mean, anybody anybody can get the application. Anybody can get this online. There's nothing secret about it. Anybody can look online for this. You can go you can go on the website of any lodge that's around you. And you can find application for it, and it tells you what you got to do, the steps and all that stuff. You don't, you don't need no W two form or anything like that. You don't need no no urine sample, no blood sample. You don't need you don't need the left arm of your firstborn son. You don't need all that. You don't need any of that. It's very simple. So he, um, my mentor gave me an application. I filled it out, and that was that. Now some time I passed, and. 
I had moved. My wife and I had moved from D.C. to Maryland, to uh, Hagerstown. And there was some there was some lodges there. And now I'm like really, really intrigued. My interest is really peaked. I'm really, you know, thinking about it. I spoke to my wife about it. You know, she said, you know, OK, it's cool with me. You know, I got no problem with it because she has Masons in her family, Masons and Eastern Star. She has a plethora of them in her family. I don't. So she actually is more familiar with it than I am. OK, I had no reference. She had most of the references about it. Just OK. Besides, she was interested in joining Eastern Star. So she always thought about that way before I did. That's all right. Cool. So now that I know that I have a, a, my blessing with my wife, I can really pursue this. So I'm like, OK, where is a good lodge to join that's close to us because it's not just about joining a lodge you gotta really join a lodge that really fl- vibes with you that really flows with you right so I'm looking I'm looking I see a couple where we live but then we move again we move from Maryland to Pennsylvania okay Maryland to Pennsylvania and I was going to join a lodge in Pennsylvania but when I had sent them the email for information for the one in Pennsylvania I never got an answer back. I said, okay. And during that time, we thought about moving back from, from Pennsylvania back to Maryland, the same place in Maryland. So I said, okay, well, since we're moving back to Maryland now, let me stop, look, let me stop looking for a lodge in Pennsylvania. Let me look for one now in Maryland where we're going to be living, since we're going back there. So I said, okay. I looked up the information for the, the, one, the, the lodge closest to where we're going to live in Maryland, and I sent them an email. And immediately... I got a response back, an email back, saying that they were, they were interested and thank you for looking us up and what made us what made me look them up and all that stuff. So I gave them my whole story and all that. So before we moved back to Merlin, they offered me an opportunity to come to the lodge and see the lodge for myself, to actually go in and meet the people that would eventually become my fellow Masons. Okay. So it was a Saturday. I remember it was a Saturday. They said, come in Saturday. So, all right, cool. Come in Saturday. Me and my wife go, down, go, go to the lodge on that Saturday. Now, I'm thinking in my mind, we, actually, we're both thinking this. I'm thinking, okay, they about to come in some, they about to come in some suits. They about to come in real, you know, hoity-toity, stuck up, nose in the air, nose in the air, looking down at you like this. You know, not really, really, not really wanting to answer any questions, not really wanting to, you know, have a dialogue because I'm coming from a place of ignorance. I don't know anything about anything about anything. I'm coming from a place of ignorance. So we get there and we get in there and one of the brothers, the actual who became the worshipful master of the lodge, came in white with some regular shorts on and a uh, regular T-shirt. And tattoos all over the place. I'm like, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Where these shorts come from? Where these tattoos come from? I was like, I was like, can Freemasons get tattoos? So I had a serious case of what's called cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is when you have two opposing ideas occupying the same space at the same time. The idea of what I thought Freemasonry was and what I thought the people would look like versus what I actually saw. I had a huge case of cognitive dissonance. And I had to I had to really deal with that in this moment. I said, okay, wait a minute, this is nothing, this is nothing like what I thought it was going to be. This is nothing like what I saw on the documentaries. This is nothing like what I saw in the movies. Nothing like it at all. So at this point, I am baffled. So we go around and we get a we get an entire tour of the lodge and it is huge. But the people, the men were just what's going on? How you doing? You know, where you from? No, met my wife. Nice to meet you. You know, all that stuff. 
we have any kids because we got programs for kids too you know shit things like that and we go around going around we go we go to the actual lodge where we actually have our meetings and i'm like okay this is crazy like i'm looking i'm looking around and all like yo this is nuts i they never showed this part in the documentary where this part been Went in the basement, saw the saw the saw the a big ballroom, the kitchen, you know, where you, where people actually cook stuff. Like, yo, where like, where was this in where was this in the documentary? Where was this in the movies? Where was this when 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 people who think they know about Freemasonry try to do an exposure video? Where is all this? This wasn't in the exposure videos for Freemasonry. This wasn't. So we go into a lodge. We we just talking, and one of the brothers said, "Have a seat." I said, have a seat where? Because you go in there, you see all these small chairs, you see like the real big chairs that you know, like the office, the office chairs. Like, have a seat. Like, have a seat where? Anywhere. Like, you sure? Like, yes, ha have a seat. Sit down. Like, it's okay, have a seat. Like, the, the chairs, sit down. I'm like, wow, wait a minute, hold on. Like, I'm seeing a worshipful master chair, I'm seeing a you know, senior and junior chair. The south, the no, the south and the west chair. I'm sorry, no, no, no. Yeah, the south and the west chair, east, south, and west chair and stuff. Like, like he said, you said no, the the poem with, with the, the book, the holy books, holy books, plural, multiple books, on the on the battle. I was like, wait a minute, like this is like this is not what I thought it was going to be and i'm thinking okay so we sit down my wife and i we sit down we're talking we're just talking 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 and i'm asking them serious questions thinking that okay this is going to be really like a stuffy interview and I, I'm, I'm still fighting with this kind of dissonance and they're just laughing and joking i meet the secretary you know just brothers the brothers of the lodge just walking around just regular just chilling Getting food at the refrigerator. Wait a minute, hold on. When did the lodge have food in, re in the refrigerator and kitchens and where does this come from? Why wasn't this in the documentaries? Why wasn't this in the exposure videos? Why was this happening? So we laughing, joking. They cracking dirty jokes. Like, wait a minute, hold on. When did Freemasons start cracking jokes? When did they start doing, wait, what? I've never seen a video or an exposure video where you see the lighter side, people start cracking jokes. So I said, okay. I've come to the realization that a lot of these exposure videos are, well, from, from what I, from all the exposure videos that I've ever seen are flat out BS. Because it's either they're going by what they've actually heard or what somebody told them. But I never got I never got a case or a story from a first hand account. Never got a story from an actual Freemason that's still in the lodge themselves. I didn't hear about this. So I was like, okay. So we get it, got the information down, I said, we said, would you like to join? I said yes. Said, so, well, it's like, well, you know, this is going to cost this, this, and this. It's going to be an interviewing process. I thought okay, it was an interview process. Okay, so we do the interview process. It was like, like, it's like, like going for a job. It wasn't nothing deep. It wasn't nothing deep or nothing like that. They asked me, do I believe in a higher power? Am I 18 or older? You know, am I trying to overthrow the government? I said, I said, I don't have time to overthrow a government. He said, okay, cool, because we don't do that here. Like, this, 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 no, that's not what we do. Like, despite what you may see and stuff on the, ain't nobody doing that. I said, okay. All right, all right, all right cool. So I was like, okay. I see now. I see now. So I said, anybody, in my mind, like, okay, now I have to go by what I've experienced my own personal experience. I have to go by what I experience. And what I'm experiencing now and what I have experienced is that these exposure videos are BS. 
and all that stuff. So I went back. I, I called my, I called my mentor. I said, you know, I saw, I saw a lodge that I like and all that stuff. And so cool. So now I've joined the lodge. Now skipping time now. I've joined the lodge and all that. And people say, well, why I do it? Well, why I did it is because the ideals, like brotherly love, relief, and truth, all that stuff. You know, the four cardinal principles. These are things that I practice or try to practice anyway. And it just feels good when you're amongst a group of people who have those same principles or ideas as you. And it just made my decision more easier. It made my decision easier or much more easy. So why did I do it? Because there were people who were like minded as I. People have people got families, people got wives, children, jobs, bills. Everybody trying to take over no government. People got bills to pay and wives and fa- and children to take care of and jobs to maintain and all that stuff. Come on now. So it ain't that deep. It, trust me, it ain't that deep. Anybody who want to know, stop going by what these exposure videos are saying and go weak. We've even had open house where people, we actually open our doors to the public in May. In Berlin, they have an open house, meaning that the lodge will open up their doors to the public. And anybody, anybody can walk in and have a discussion and just walk in and walk around the lodge and get a tour of the lodge. No charge and none of that stuff. Open house on May, in May. Emerald. Any it's an open house. That means anybody could walk in. They got food set up for people who come in, all that stuff. And people had people had, like I seen where people had, well, uh, I saw a, where a man was so fascinated, but he was so nervous, he was so fixated because of what he saw, what he heard, that he was like he asked, he asked one he asked one of the brothers like no can I take pictures like yeah take pictures go ahead take pictures he, the, one of the brothers even posed he posed in the lodge for the gentleman to take a picture. Now, how that man supposed to go back and now say, these people are evil? When, when one of the brothers gave him a tour around the lodge and said, you, you can take pictures. P- he was posing. How you supposed to, how, now, how you supposed to go home and say, you know what? These people are still evil. They try to take over the world. And some of them even joined from the open house. I know brothers that have actually joined because of the open house. They came in, got information, said, this is, this is pretty cool, and joined. So, anyway, why did I join? Because the ideals and principles are something that I believe in also. And the men, who, the men and the women and their families were upstanding people. The men and their wives and their children My children still talk to their children to this day. And we're in two different states. And I've met people from all over the world with with social media or in person that I've kept in contact with. Very good people. Right, so once you actually actually go and see for yourself and not just go by what you've read or go by what you've heard, and actually, actually just go to an actual person and see you will realize that it ain't that deep. And I think, I think, I think that's actually, that's actually was, was it's, it's always like, you know, I want to find out, but if I find out and I find out that what I thought was going on is really going on, then the mystery is over. The mystery is not the actual knowledge. The mystery is actually the ignorance. The ignorance that you don't know is actually where the mystery lies. And people are comfortable in their ignorance. People are com- comfortable Believing in the mystery rather than investigating and finding out if the mystery is true or not. Because if you find out that the mystery isn't true, then you have to now deal with your own ignorance. And some people just don't want to do it. Some people are comfortable in their ignorance. Some people are actually happier knowing that they don't know. Because when you find out that what you thought was true isn't true, you now have to deal with that cognitive dissonance. You now have to deal with that ignorance. And you have to really just say, okay, you know what? I don't know crap. I know that I don't know crap. And for years and years and years, I have been speaking about something that I actually don't know. 
and I was too egotistical to admit that I don't know. And I was too egotistical to go find out to see if what I knew was true. That's something you got to deal with. So for all those who want to know, go find out. Go, go online. Go online to where you live. Go look up any lodge and go see the application. Call them up. Email them. Text them and say, hey, I want. I'm interested. I would like to know if I if we could set up a meeting where I can meet you and we can talk. Do that. Do that. And it can't be a secret. Everybody got bumper stickers on the cars. And the build a huge giant building got a big symbol of a compass and square. It can't be a secret. Everybody can spot where it is. Can't be a secret. So what's the secret? What's the secret if people got rings? If you see a big giant ring like this and people got rings bigger than this, what's the secret? The secret is some people are just too ignorant to go find out for themselves. Ah, because what you thought was true may be exposed not to be true. Oh, oh. So go find out. And now you know why I joined. And I'm glad I joined. So go find out. I'll catch you all later. Leave a comment down below. I know I'm, I know I may get some ignorant comments. That's fine. I, I, I would tell them, like I was saying in this video, for those who are happy in their ignorance, go find out for yourself. Go actually go go call up a lodge. Go go call up a lodge and find out for yourself. Go find out for yourself. Stop being so afraid. Go find out for yourself. And if it's not for you, it's not for you. Fine. It ain't for you. It ain't, hey, it ain't for everybody. Whatever. But don't sit around being comfortable in your ignorance. Going for what you read. Because what you read, you can't go to that person and ask them yourself, hey, have you ever joined the lodge? Have you ever joined? Have you ever been to a meeting? So what you can do is go yourself. Go yourself, get your butt up, go yourself, and go find out for yourself. Go find out for yourself. Go to a large and ask for yourself. All right? So, for the ignorant comments that may come, y'all gotta, gotta deal with your own ignorance. You have to deal with your own ignorance. And that's not my, that's not my issue. That's your issue. You should go to sleep with your own ignorance. So, that's all I gotta say. So, that's why I joined. So, catch you all later. Peace.